five out of the governors that make up the South South Governors Forum have asked the Chief Justice of Nigeria, Justice Walter Anoga, not to honor the summons from the Code of Conduct Bureau, dragging him before the Code of Conduct Tribunal for alleged non declaration of assets. Following an emergency meeting in Abuja, the governors of Akwai Bom Bayelsa, Cross River, Delta, and Rivers condemned the planned trial of the Chief Justice of Nigeria, saying it is a step aimed at intimidating and embarrassing the nation's number one judicial officer. Only Governor Godwin Obaseke of the ruling APC was absent from the meeting. We know further that this action undermines, critically, undermines confidence, not only in the judiciary of our country as an institution, but it also undermines confidence in the electoral process that has already commenced in view of the pivotal role that the judiciary plays in the process of electoral adjudication. We affirm that President Muhammadu Buhari knows that the continuous assault on critical institutions of state is a defining feature of a dictatorship, not of a democracy. And that the president is obliged to live up to his word that is a born again Democrat, as he has assured all Nigerians since assuming office 2015. Based on the foregoing, we hereby call on the president as follows one, to condemn forfeit without any equivocation whatsoever, this unprecedented, premeditated assault on the judiciary as an institution and the person and office of His Lordship, the Chief Justice of Nigeria, coming especially after similar assaults on the National Assembly in order to save our democracy and our country from embarrassment and global contempt. Number two, we call on His Lordship, the Chief Justice of Nigeria, to ignore the so-called court summons from the CCB and the provocative calls emanating from some quarters for his resignation. While we are not opposed to any genuine fight against corruption, and we all support it, we have taken the view, as all well-meaning members of our country have also, that these actions must always be anchored on the rule of law. We'll be having more reactions to Justice Onogan's arraignment, uh, but joining us now on the News at 10 is Senior Advocate of Nigeria and President, Center for Social Legal Studies, Professor Yomi Akinshaya George. Professor, you're welcome to the News at 10. Uh, many of the comments we have heard trailing what has happened um, in the arraignment tomorrow of Justice Walter Onogan uh, say the judicial officers cannot be tried by the National Judicial Council. How correct is this? Um, I think one thing is clear, without any equivocation or doubt whatsoever, and that is that no judicial officer, no sitting judicial officer can be tried by any court, including the Code of Conduct Tribunal, without that judicial officer first being processed through the National Judicial Council. That's basic. That's the law of the land. You know, and that remains the law. It has not been, it has not been set aside. You know, so everybody, every authority in the executive, in the judiciary, must make sure that this law is complied with. So there's no trying the Chief Justice of Nigeria or arraigning him when those allegations have not been, you know, taken before the NJC for, for the internal processes to be applied before any further action can be taken, clearly. 
And if anybody should know, there's a shipper, the Chief Justice of Nigeria himself, Mr. Walter Nothing. So it does go on, it does mean that you're supporting the South South governors who say that he should not appear uh, at, the, at the arraignment tomorrow, him being the Chief Judicial Officer of the nation. I'm not supporting anybody, but I'm taking the view which I think is well founded in the law and jurisprudence. And that is that. There are no charges, as far as I'm concerned. No, no charges, as far as the law is concerned. No charges known to law have been proffered because the procedure by which such charges could be proffered you know, ha has not been complied with. The procedure has not been complied with. You know? And even when whatever we do when we're fighting corruption, we're advancing democracy, everything must be done in the context of the rule of law. That is the only thing that can guarantee the survival of democracy. That's the only thing that can guarantee the, 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 the stability of the country, which I believe you know, we are all uh, interested in. So what legal advice should he be listening to at this time? Should he appear? Should he not appear? As far as I'm concerned, there are no, no charges known to law have been brought against the Chief Justice of Nigeria because the investigation process, which must involve the NJC, has not, been, has not been complied with. We are not aware that any allegations have been, you know, submitted to the NJC for consideration or investigation against the Chief Justice of Nigeria. We know some things have happened, but as far as the law is concerned, those processes are unknown. They are, not, they are, they are incompetent. They are, they are incompetent. So are you, you know, saying... That is the law. Are you saying you know, that... We know politicians will do... They will do what they will do. Elections are coming on both sides. They want to capitalize on you know, the, the current situation, you know, to, you know, embarrass the country, embarrass the government and all of that. That is immaterial. What does the law say? What is the rule of law? The law is that you cannot proceed against a sitting judicial officer when the NJC has not been given an opportunity to investigate the case dispassionately, to subject such a case to the internal disciplinary processes of the NJC. If that has not been done, as far as I'm concerned, there are no charges. The question of withdrawing charges does not arise because there, is no, there are no charges. No, we're not talking in, about... You know, on paper, you know, some people may have... Professor... They may have written some things they call charges. Professor... They may have drafted some things they call summons. Okay. The law does not know such things. Yeah, but professor, professor, are you saying, professor, are you saying that he should not appear tomorrow? How do you appear? There can be no arraignment without charges. There can be no arraignment without charges. If there are no charges known to law, there can be no arraignment. The law is clear on this. It, there's no equivocation. Hmm. It's not a matter of interpretation. There's nothing to be interpreted. The, the Court of Appeal, in the case of Nganjiwa, made it clear, and I think rightly, that, and, and, and this is very important because a situation where an executive arm, executive body, or a legislative uh, body can sweep up on the judiciary, and, and, and say we are investigating you, therefore you cannot longer continue your judicial function. That's anti-democratic. That's unconstitutional. That is why in its wisdom, the highest, uh, the, the Court of Appeal, which is the, you know, uh, I mean, the, the court that is um, the, the, the intermediate court before the Supreme Court, and, the, and that is the highest decision on that point as at now, says you cannot investigate or bring charges against a judicial officer when those charges have not been submitted, those allegations have not been taken before the NJC for, 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 for its own internal processes to be applied. Yes. So as far as I'm concerned, there are no charges. And right. I believe this position is well-founded in law. If there are no competent charges, you cannot, you cannot, you cannot you know, embarrass the country, denigrate the dem democracy. By, and, by, and, by you have, and you have made that abundantly clear, Professor. The, the, you, you, you've made that abundantly clear, Professor, that there are no charges here. But um, there are those who have spoken out against the timing of uh, what is happening, the uh, arraignments and the so-called charges, which you say do not exist against uh, Justice Walter Onogeng. Uh, seeing that this is happening just uh, uh, days, we're counting days now to the presidential election, what do you make of the timing of what's going on? I think it's an unnecessary distraction. The, the, the judiciary has been consistent, as far as I know, as far as I'm concerned. I mean, they have given laudable decisions which have supported the anti-corruption fight. 
which have supported human rights, which have maintained the balance between both sides. In some cases, they have discharged high-profile defendants. In some cases, they have proceeded with trial. Some have even been convicted. So the judiciary is on the right path. The judiciary has begun to redeem itself. And the judiciary must be allowed to continue to perform its function. There must be no undue interference. When the judiciary is threatened, everyone is, everyone is, in, is, 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 is in danger. We are, we are all at risk, including whoever may have orchestrated this, this destruction, this, this denigration, this contemptuous act, which is calculated to, to slow down the progress of the democracy of this country. I'm not talking politics. I'm talking law. Uh, Professor, Professor Yemi Akinshia, Georgia, thank you so much for speaking with us on the News at 10. I appreciate your thoughts and, of course, your opinions on what is going on uh, with the Chief Justice of Nigeria, Justice Walter Onogeng. The best tribute Nigerians can give to the nation's following heroes is the maintenance of unity and peaceful coexistence. So speaking at the 2019 Armed Forces Remembrance Day Interdenominational Day celebration in Abuja, the Vice President, Professor Yemi Oshibajo, appealed to the unity, appealed that the unity and territorial integrity of the nation for which they died must not be jeopardized by reckless utterances and actions. Our correspondent, Gloria Umezuke, reports. Hymns herald the Vice President's arrival to the 2019 Armed Forces Remembrance Day service. Hundreds of worshippers joined the dignitaries in celebrating falling heroes with more praise and worship. The Chief of the Fence Staff and Speaker of the House of Representatives took the first and second scripture reading preceding the message of the day. May the Almighty and merciful God answer our prayers to him. Against the backdrop of terrorist attacks in the Northeast, His Eminence Cardinal John Onaiko reiterates the obligations of the Army and that of the government. Our soldiers have volunteered to defend the nation not to attack anyone, less still to oppress anybody. We remember especially those who have died recently in the present ongoing conflict in the Northeast, whether they perished in combat or in ambush, or as a result of alleged inadequate arms. Complaints in this regard arrive and they should not be silenced or swept under the carpet. Rather, all such complaints ought to be properly investigated. The Vice President, Professor Yemi Oshibajo, reminded that Nigeria has in the last few weeks lost over a dozen soldiers and Air Force pilots trying to fend off Boko Haram. But our gratitude must also mean a commitment for ensuring that their families are cared for, that their children do not ask why the sacrifices they made were made at all. This unity and territorial integrity of the nation for which they died must not be jeopardized by the reckless utterances and actions which play on the religious and ethnic fault lines of our nation. This service precedes the main event on January 15, where the president and vice president is expected to lead other government officials to lay wreath in honor of the fallen soldiers. Well, very clearly it has been agreed here that it is not only time to remember falling heroes, but it is definitely time to renew commitment towards the welfare of the armed forces and their families to enhance military service in the country. From the Ecumenical Center, Gloria Umezuki, Channels Television News.